Okay, this is something of a piece that has a little bit of a watershed touch to it, so to speak. It was something that happened, that special, or whatever, that year, it was the year 1986 that was special. And that year was when I turned 13. And it was around the time when I started to show a very, very, very strong interest in photocopiers. And that was like, get out. And that was like, yeah, very special. Just try and see if we can make this one look good. Okay, let's see what we have. We have here, of course, 13 today. So that's not today for me, but this is really important. So I thought I'd talk about my 13th birthday or the, around that time, maybe not smack bang on the day from memory, but it was about being into photocopiers is, was the, is the theme of being 13 for me. So, it wasn't something my dad was particularly chuffed with, me being into this. Uh, he still hates it. But I'm going to continue with what I do and do best, making photocopier art. And yeah, and that's why I think of 13, because 13 reminds me of the uh, photocopier on a, on a big scale. Um, I wonder if that's any good or we're going to do another one. But basically, yeah, it was a, a watershed year for me. I was learning all sorts of things about these equipments, you know, in a more smaller way but basically yeah it's what I'm into and what I do best and I'm not going to change I'm going to keep doing it and one day I'll be designing photocopiers folks I'm going to take it further I'm going to become CEO of a future uh, photocopier company I'm going to get the brain damaged um, parts of my brain supplemented with uh, technology there's one there's some there's there is someone working on uh, stuff that could possibly be uh, utilized as neuroprosthesis or neuroprosthetics for the brain and basically that person is Elon Musk he calls it Neuralink and he's just trying to make some I don't know if I can trust him, but basically it's, it's encouraging to see some kind of work happening on this ground because I've got brain damage that I had at birth, which is going to prevent me from being a CEO if it's not treated. So I'm sort of hoping that maybe Neuralink or something similar could come to the rescue one day and make, make my functioning complete. So, you know, um, that looks interesting. So basically, yeah, and I want to, but the kind of um, photocopier company I envisage in the future has got to focus more on people, on helping people and the environment rather than making a, an obscene profit. You know, and we've got to stop using uh, slave labour uh, to make the equipment. So the equipment I'm envisaging will be made down under on Australian soil. And this company is going to be fully Australian owned. Um, we're, the only thing that we're going to outsource is are the materials. We're going to try and clean up uh, e-waste dumps or electronic waste dumps around the world, like in places like India and China. Who've, who have, which have become 
dumping grounds for this kind of disgusting and extremely toxic waste. So we have to use our money to clean up the planet. And I want to be a scientist as well as a CEO. So I'm looking forward to the day when I can find a solution for climate change. So we've been polluting our planet for too long. Uh, someone's got to come, to come for a solution. And that's what I want to do. And the money I earn as a CEO will be funneled into scientific projects that I will do personally and also outsource to other people who could do it as well. So we've got to think of our environment, we've got to think of our humanity. We can't allow greed and porkery to take over our lives and to ruin our planet even further. We've got to do something, folks, um, to make a difference. Um, and that's what I really want to do. And I want to look back on the time when I was 13 as just the beginnings, folks. The beginnings of something that I'm hoping will become big. And basically, I, I just love to look back on the year 1986 when I was 13. Let's see how we go with this. But it, it is a special year and I just want to always remember it. And now someone's ringing. It's the photocopier company, but I can't answer it at this stage. I hate it when the phone rings and I'm demoing. Um, unfortunately, I can't answer their phone call at this stage. Um, finished. I'm going to have to ring back. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. I don't know why they're ringing. I thought I paid off all, all the things that I had to do. That looks interesting. Uh, I think we, we don't feel like we're getting anywhere with this piece. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to use this as our uh, master copy, move it around. But yeah, that was a watershed moment, folks. A, more, a watershed year, should I say. Um, special you don't get years like that every year i mean the year 2020 looks like shit because it's all about the coronavirus and the horrible things that are going on in this world so it's not a happy year i think 1986 was a more happier time for a lot of people like any time in the 80s Yeah, that looks interesting, but it's not what I want. I do like these little dots there. Um, I don't know how I'm going to make this look any good. This looks quite nice. It's promising, but it's not quite there. Maybe we could use that. Um, but basically, yeah, uh, this year has been a shit year for a lot of people, and people who lose their jobs through this dreadful disease and you know you can't there's no vaccine for it yet there's no vaccine so there's no way people are going to you know we can't travel we can't do this we can't do that most of the i think the queensland border is closed so i can't go to brisbane uh, however much I'd like to go there, it's really um, not a happy time in our history, the world's history, to deal with this disease, um, the coronavirus. It's a disease all right, it's a fuck. It's a, what they call a pandemic. It just doesn't look like it's about to end.
and we still have to tread water until at least next year because I think that's when they forecast that we're going to get a vaccine. So we've lost the happy happiness of the years. I'm I'm dealing with my, I'm dealing with stuff within. I sort of feel like I'm happy overall. I still feel actually I don't know if I'm really happy. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, um, I'm ha happy about my future. But I'm not happy about the present. I don't like the present, folks. I'm not happy about, uh, well, the coronavirus is one of the things I'm not happy with. But I'm, I do get lonely and there is a person missing from my life. And that's the source of my unhappiness is not being with him. And that is Luigi. His name is Luigi and I love him and I adore him and I'm trying to get this photocopier art on, on television so I can find him because I know he'll, he'll know it's me that's been doing this creative stuff and that maybe he, he can come and contact me through the TV channel. So I'm really longing to see Luigi and I'm just working at it. He's the one that spurs me on, folks. He, in anticipating of finding him, it just keeps me going, folks. Even when I feel worn out, I just keep going at it because I need to know where he is so I can have my life made complete because without him, I don't feel complete. I don't feel like me. I, I had opportunities to to link up with him when I was young, but I never took them. I never took the time, I never took the... I just really fucked up. And now I have to... have to start from scratch and try and find him through a less orthodox manner. You know, he gave me his phone number, it ended up in the bin. So I don't have access to his phone number, I don't have his email address, I certainly don't have a postal address. I can't find him here, I can't find him there. I've given up, except to keep making these demos in the hope that they'll get televised. So this is, this is my watershed moment, nine, 1986. But we gotta go beyond 86. We can't live in 86 forever. Um, I used to wish, but not anymore. I've got to go forward, folks. Even though the past haunts me, I have to fucking go forward. Anyway, that's turned up quite nice. I think now we can call this demo quits.